Hi, welcome to One Eye on the Page. I'm Scott. This is the weekly wrap-up for the 4th through the 10th of December. Let's go. I finished five books this week. And by finishing five books, I mean I finished five, two books in the first six days and three books today. And here comes Wash. So the first book I finished was Written in the Stars by Alexandria Bellaflor. It is a sapphic romance. Uh, it is Christmas themed. I will admit that when I first picked it up, I wasn't exactly sure that it was Christmas themed. Didn't I probably mentioned Christmas in the synopsis, but I not anywhere near the top. And I was just like, okay, it's a audio book that I can get for free. So I'll listen to it because I'd been listening to a little bit heavier stuff before. So it was a, a, a pretty decent read. I will get the complaints out of the way first. This book, as with a lot of books, particularly romances, has parents in it who suck. And although not as bad as other books that I've read, uh, it does kind of have the thing at the end of the book where the parent is pretty much the same, or at least one parent is pretty much the same. And the other parent slightly improves, and the kids are just supposed to be okay with it. The, the horrible, okay, the horrible parents who essentially the children apologize to, and by children I mean adult children, apologize to is something that just grates on my nerves. But moving past that, it, it's a book about a bad blind date, or at least it starts out that way. Uh, an astrologer uh, goes on a date with an actuary, and they sound about as similar as that sounds. So the date doesn't go well. But the actuary, and her name is Darcy, she tells her brother, who actually works with the astrologer, that it went well because if not then he wanted to do speed dating with her and she didn't want to do that so she says it went well but not to say anything and of course he does say something and so the two of them end up fake dating so obviously fake dating turns into real feelings it, it not making any new strides here but it's in how it tells the story both both characters are are pretty interesting both characters are fun i darcy is the more i guess because it's almost grumpy sunshine too and darcy is grumpy but not super grumpy and both of them feel pretty real i particularly like because you know it's going to happen when there's a fake dating thing Son of a bitch! <laughs> when the fake dating thing happens, you know that it's going to be discovered. And of course it is, but I, I appreciate the way that it came out in this way. Uh, I, I would prefer to find a fake dating story in which uh, the, the two people end up dating together and nobody actually finds out that they were fake dating. Just once, just for the novelty of it, but of course, we don't get it here. Uh, characters are fun. Uh, roommate and best friend of the astrologer. And I'm just, I'm blanking on her name. I'm sorry. She was actually my favorite character in the book. But I'm just blanking on her name right now because I've read four other books after this book. But her roommate slash best friend is fun. I, I like some of her family members. I do not like her mom at all. I don't particularly like one of her sisters. Uh, honestly, the brother of the actuary of, of Darcy, very annoying. 
I, I know he's supposed to come across as this brother who really cares and is trying to be there for his sister, but he is so fucking pushy. And it's like, sometimes people just need to be in their feels and not forced into getting over stuff. And I'm not saying that she should have just wallowed in it, but there, there's just a lot of area in between. I, I just, I didn't appreciate him as much as I think maybe I was supposed to. But overall, I'm, I'm going to give this one a, a four star. It's probably a light four star, but it is a four star. Uh, it was a pretty good romance, so that suggests that maybe I shouldn't read any more romances for the rest of the month based on my theory that if I read a good romance, every other romance I read that month is going to suck. It's not always true. It's often true. So the second book that I read is also Christmas themed. It is The Stupidest Angel by Christopher Moore. I generally love Christopher Moore. Uh, his, his love sucks and dirty job books are excellent books. This book is a Pine Cove book. Uh, it's the third Pine Cove book. Ooh, I can't remember the names. Well, let's see. The other two are, uh, I believe it's The Lust Lizard of Melancholy Cave and maybe Practical Demon Keeping. I believe Practical Demon Keeping. I don't really remember much about those books, although some of the characters in here appeared in those books also. But I will guess on my not remembering that I didn't enjoy them as much. Those two books were a little bit earlier in his career. This one, I believe, is from 2004. But not my favorite. I almost always enjoy Christopher Moore's humor, and I did here, but the characters really fell flat for me. And I actively disliked Tucker Case. And he has a talking fruit bat, and if you like somebody so much that you can't even enjoy his talking fruit bat, you know, there's just something wrong with that character. It's, it's, it's a it calls itself a heartwarming tale of Christmas horror. And it does lean into that. There are zombies and stupid angels and Santa Claus is being murdered. It is okay. I think if you had taken the character of Tucker Case out of there, because I really disliked him, that I, I would have had a favorable impression of the book not a particularly memorable impression of the book but i i did like some of the characters but none of them seem like real people it just seemed like let's put these people in situations okay let's move them and put them in this situation and Everybody's emotions and feelings are very surface level. I'm going to give it a two and a half. And honestly, part of that is just because it's a Christmas story. And, you know, uh, I'm happy to be enjoying some Christmas stories this month. Now, which brings me to the next book which is The Twelve Slays of Christmas by Jacqueline Frost. It is a mystery, it is a, mystery a cozy mystery, uh, set in a town called Mistletoe in, on a tree farm. There is somebody murdered on the tree farm, and the daughter who has returned there after a broken engagement uh, tries to not solve the case but get get a suspect a suspect so that the sheriff will agree to let her, her parents open the, the tree farm back up because 
this is the time of year in which they make their money. And, you know, they almost every year just kind of barely make it through. And it's, it's also sort of a light romance. Um, it is somewhat cheesy, but not in a bad way. Uh, I, I like some of the characters. I will say completely whiffed it on guessing who the murderer was. I had somebody pick that I thought was the murderer because I thought so much attention was not being paid to this person that it had to be the person, but it was not the case. And there was a lot of reasons why my pick wouldn't have been a, a, a good pick anyway, which I can't explain without giving away some of the hints about the murderer. I, I will say that I don't particularly care for who what the murderer was as far as the story goes it makes sense but it's also a little cheap i think just just barely but there's just the writing is light and quick quick i did listen to an audio book but i think if i was reading the physical copy too it would have been gone by quickly too. Uh, I have just started today the second book in the series. There are four books in the series. Two of them I got for free on Audible and two I went ahead and used credits for. So they better be good because I'm going to be really upset if I read the second one and it's like, oh, this one's not good and now I have to read two more because I used the credits. But so that one, light four, light four. Uh, I, I think there had been more of the murderer than I would have enjoyed it just a little bit more where I said, oh yeah, solid four. It, it's a light four, fun read, and I'm moving on to the next book in it. Book number four is The Little Nugget by P.G. Woodhouse. It is the podcast book of the month that we are reading uh robin hasn't started yet obviously because it's robin uh, also she she she's taking college classes while working full-time too but she will also be whining as she reads this uh in the days right before we're going to do the podcast on it i enjoyed it uh it was published in 1913 it, it involves a lot of things that I don't usually enjoy about Woodhouse. It's set at a school, but it's not a school story. It is set at a school, but the, the, the boys at the school are not the focus of the story. There's one boy, the little nugget, uh, Ogden Ford, who, who is a big part of the story. But luckily for us, we don't see him too often because... If we saw him a lot, that would be too much because he's quite an irritating child. And him being an irritating child is part of the story itself. So he needs to be irritating, but only enough that we can say, oh yeah, that kid sucks, but not so much that we go, that kid sucks, and it's ruining the book. So the, the uh, main character of the story is Peter Burns, who is a, a very rich young man who had been engaged to Audrey, but they broke up and she got married to somebody else because he admits himself that he was uh, not great as a young rich man and going through that breakup has improved him. But he is now engaged to somebody else mainly out of pity uh he feels bad for her and they get engaged and she asks him to kidnap ogden ford ogden ford is the son of uh elmer and nesta ford who have divorced for some reason elmer has custody this is as i said published in 1913 
that that a, a man has custody. It seems strange to me, but I don't know. Maybe statistics back that up back then. Um, in Ogden is quite the spoiled little chap, and uh, his mother keeps trying to kidnap him. And also, he, he's they're American, and when he was in America, there are always people trying to kidnap him to ransom him back to his rich father. Uh, it, it became quite a habit. It reminded me of uh, plane hijackings in the 1960s. It's like, oh, we're doing this again, whereas plane hijackings now are like, whoa, this is can't believe that happened whereas in the 1960s it's like oh we're being hijacked again uh so peter is trying to hijack ogden and in doing so he becomes an assistant master at a school where ogden is at he encounters i'm blanking on the name right now Ooh, buck uh, I forget his last name, but he encounters Bug, who is an American gangster and is written like an American gangster that I guess the way an Englishman would see it is just full of stereotypes. Um, and also uh, Sam, and I've forgotten his name too, but who is, is another kidnapper, but is much uh, more smooth. His Name is Smooth Sam Fisher. Smooth Sam Fisher. Uh, it, and he's pretty classy. Seeming, at least. I mean, whether his character is classy, that will be up to you, I guess. And also, at one point, Audrey, the woman that Peter was engaged to, comes there. She has been hired to keep an eye on Ogden for Mr. Ford. So you have a bunch of people trying to kidnap Ogden, a bunch of people trying to keep Ogden safe. You have some romance. There, there's, there's romance in here, but it's almost always just under the surface. Uh, the romance in here was, was pretty interesting because Peter is a little different than a lot of Woodhouse romantic heroes where he's very self-reflective very sacrificing uh he does a lot of stuff for audrey and cynthia his fiance that uh are selfless again <laughs> not all woodhouse uh male characters are like that i am also going to give this a very light um, there's a lot of stuff in here that I shouldn't like. The the the, the school, the the uh, stereotypical American gangster, uh, the irritating child. Yeah, but while it's a school, there's it's a very small school. It's got like twenty six kids, I think twenty six or twenty eight, I think. Uh, we very we see very little of most of them, which, considering my next book that I will talk about, I'm appreciative of. So, my next book is also a P.G. Woodhouse book. It is The Head of K's, which it is the, I believe, fourth book that Woodhouse published. I believe it is the fourth book. Fourth or maybe fifth, but I do believe it's fourth. It is another school story. There are a lot of school children in here. I will say, uh, unlike the pot hunters, a prefect's uncle, and the gold bat, which uh, I have all read, it's concentrated on a few of the boys, whereas those books were like had many characters. There are a lot of characters in here, but there are only a limited number of main characters. And the plot line is more linear to me than the previous uh, books I talked about. So that's a plus. Generally likable for young Woodhouse boys. Kennedy is at 
in one house. I believe it's Bainbridge. It's not Bainbridge, but it sounds somewhat like Bainbridge. And there is uh, K's, which K's is essentially, I don't know, a jungle land or, or something, largely because uh, Master K isn't a very good headmaster. And the current head of K's is Fen, and they bring Kennedy over to be the, the head of K's. Fen and Kennedy are friends, but this puts a, a little bit of uh, tension between the two of them. And also there are boys who are in K's who are resistant to somebody else coming and taking over, are just resistant to order. Uh, and of course, often that is solved in a early 20th century boarding uh, boarding school in Woodhouse by physicality. There's at least one boxing fight in here, and there's other physical uh, punishment of students by uh, the prefects and the, the head of the houses. I don't qualify this as one of my favorite Woodhouse books, but of the school books that I've read, not counting Mike because, well, Mike is a school story. I, I, I think it's, it's just so far ahead of the other ones. I, I do think it's pretty good. I'm going to give it a three and a half star. So I did read five books this week. As I've said before, I'm going for 200 since I was at 178 at the start of the month. So I'm at 183 now. I got 17 more to go, and I have 21 days. We shall see. I, I read a little bit more in the books I talked about last week, which I won't go into again, but the last three or four days, I've mainly just been concentrating on these books that I knew I would finish this week. So I, I will go into more detail about them next week. And uh, please like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I will talk to you next time.